Hi, I'm Stephen Orr, and today we're going to talk about one of the most popular flowers in the world, but also one that has kind of a difficult reputation, kind of a high-maintenance diva, roses. Everybody loves roses, but some of us as gardeners kind of went through a rose phase and then kind of gave up a little bit because they can be difficult. But these are the roses that are not difficult. These are roses that are bred to be more low maintenance, um, more disease resistant, and just easier to use. As a big group, they're called shrub roses, kind of a catch-all umbrella for plants that are grown for the way the plant looks as much as the flower. Because I'd say about 50 or 70 years ago, somewhere in the middle of the last century, garden roses were really grown for only the flower. And we may all think of those rose gardens where it's just a bunch of spindly plants with a beautiful flower and nothing else. But these roses are actually meant to be integrated into your garden. They're really great plants that are either small, medium, or large shrubs. We have several varieties here. The most famous, and it's probably the best-selling rose in the world, or at least one of the best-selling roses in the world, is the knockout rose. Uh, there it comes in a variety of colors. Uh, knockout roses are very famous for being long-blooming. Um, they bloom all summer long, basically, almost till fall or all the way till frost. Uh, they are medium-sized shrubs that are almost as wide as they are tall. So you can plant them in a big bank of roses if you want to have a long line of them along a fence. But also they look good um, sprinkled in amongst other perennials or other shrubs. Other type of rose that's really good is uh, these new drift roses. These are newer. This is a tiny little flower here, a little apricot colored uh, rose. Uh, these are also good for as a ground cover rose, as they're called, because they'll just be thick and they'll grow and they'll cover a big space, but they're also good to incorporate into a flower bed of herbs and, and annuals and perennials. We also have an Easy Elegance series here as well. All of these series are great to look at, and you can just pick different colors that you like the best. Um, all of these roses are easy to find um, online and in nurseries. They're very popular these days. If you want to look, um, do some internet research and find out which roses do best for you, you can look at the American Rose Society. They have a lot of good tips and also they list um, varieties uh, that get awards for uh, hardiness or being roses that grow across the country. One of the things I love about roses is the fragrance and sometimes when they're breeding for all the things like disease resistance or hardiness or low maintenance, sometimes the fragrance kind of was the last thing they're paying attention to. I do notice that fragrance is coming back in on certain of the, the lines. So uh, this Easy Elegance um, Yellow Brick Road, Rose has a really beautiful classic rose fragrance, whereas the Knockout doesn't have as much fragrance. So if you love the smell of roses, you know, when you go to the nursery, just take a sniff and see which one combines all the traits that you'd like to have. As far as planting roses, basically like any shrub or perennial, you can plant them as a container plant. You can plant them in the spring, summer, or fall. I wouldn't plant them when they're really hot because that's stressful for any plant. There's a long tradition of planting bare root roses, and um, I've tried both. Bare root roses take longer to take off, but the best part about growing bare root roses is that you can get the mail order very cheaply, you can get multiples much more cheaply, and it's a great way if you're trying to add a, a lot of roses to your landscape to get um, a more inexpensive solution to that. Sometimes old-fashioned roses like hybrid teas um, can take a lot of chemicals to make them look good. They require a lot of synthetic fertilizers, they require a lot of spraying with different oils to keep um, fungus and pests at bay. Uh, these shrub roses are bred to be less high maintenance that way. The Carefree Rose Series is bred to be less oriented to a black spot or different powdery mildew problems, which plague a lot of roses. Hopefully, these won't have that. If you're having trouble with your roses with a lot of fungal diseases, um, just be aware that that rose is probably in too wet of a situation and you might want to move it somewhere else next year. Roses love sun, they love regular water, but you know, it's better not to spray the leaves, that, that encourages fungus, so water at the base and, um, and fertilize, you know, if you fertilize once a month with an organic fertilizer or a time-release fertilizer, they'll like that as well. So these roses are meant to bloom continuously, that's one of their big perks, is they kind of keep in flower all summer long and all the way till frost, they don't need much deadheading. Uh, you can leave the, the little spent flower heads on here without too much trouble. Um, old fashioned roses, I would say old roses from the early part of the 20th century or even earlier, often just bloomed once. They, they had an amazing bloom in June and then they were done for the year. These are bred to keep blooming all summer. 
Some classic roses take a lot of complicated pruning. You have to prune them just a certain way and all of that. These are, these are supposed to be as low maintenance as possible with pruning as well. They're designed to be that way. You would prune them in the early spring before the leaves, right when the leaves are starting to bud. You can see the little leaf buds coming out. That's a good time to do it. Um, you, you don't have to prune every year. Basically, you're pruning to keep them in shape, keep them in the right size so they're not getting too large. And you could prune some of them, a full grown one you could prune down to a foot or 10 inches at that time and then let it kind of sprout back. It'll rejuvenate the whole plant and make it bloom even more. These roses are meant to be grown in all over the country, especially in places that other roses might not be hardy. If you live in one of those places where it's really cold, um, particularly where it could be quite windy in the winter, you want to make sure that you let the, let the plant go dormant when, it, when winter comes. You also want to um, let the ground freeze and then you can start to protect this part of the plant here at the base. That's what you're most trying to protect. So you can either mulch that add straw or use a rose cone. That rose cone needs to have ventilation and it probably needs to be weighted because it can get pretty windy. So we hope you'll take another look at roses. What used to be a high maintenance plant is really now very easy to integrate naturally into your garden.